Why? <laughs>One of the nerdy questions I get asked the most is why does Captain America's shield bounce? If the defining feature of the vibranium laced shield is that it absorbs large amounts of kinetic energy, the energy of motion, why does it not simply drop when it hits a wall or other object? Shouldn't the kinetic energy just get absorbed? To finally answer this question, if the shield does absorb kinetic energy, we have to track where that energy goes afterwards. That's something that I think us nerds forget to do. When an object with mass is in motion, it gains kinetic energy, which is equal to one half times the object's mass times the object's velocity squared. When an object with kinetic energy stops moving, that's because it's being acted upon by some outside force, like energy going into sound, you know, like that, or heat, or into permanently deforming the material. But we never really hear a significant sound when this uh, perfectly shaped Captain America shield hits something, nor do we see it ah, significantly heat up. And of course, it doesn't permanently deform because it's indestructible. So after it absorbs kinetic energy, where does it go? The only plausible option is that the shield absorbs kinetic energy and then that energy is returned to the shield. That would explain why the shield bounces. You've played with a super ball before, right? Ugh. A super ball bounces because the material that makes it up deforms. When it does, the kinetic energy of the ball's motion is transformed into elastic potential energy as the atoms and molecules bend to accommodate the impact force like trillions of little springs. But when that force is removed, the atoms and molecules snap back into their original position, returning this elastic potential energy to the ball as kinetic energy, and that's a bounce. Materials that are potentially good bouncers are usually elastic, and when you think of an elastic material, you probably think of something like rubber, but metals are incredibly elastic, even more so than rubber, and that's because of the definition of the term. Elasticity is the ability for a material to resist deformation and then return to its original shape. And when you graph out how much force per area it takes to deform a metal some amount, you get a curve like this. Now, in this linear range, any amount of energy you input could be potentially returned as kinetic energy as long as you don't get past the failure point where it deforms too much. The problem is though, for most metals, you can blow right past this elastic region and into the failure region where the metal deforms too much and becomes uh, not bouncy anymore. And this happens at impact velocities of just 0.1 meters per second. And Cap whips that thing way faster than that. Oh, oh, it's gone rogue. Oh, should have should have looked at the angles on that one. So metals are very elastic under the right conditions, but not necessarily shield throwing conditions. This is where vibranium comes hey, in. Hey, no, jeez, jeez. There is actually a measure of how good a material is at absorbing and returning kinetic energy called the coefficient of restitution, or COR. And the closer this coefficient is to one, the better the material is at staying in the critical elastic range. And you can visualize the COR simply by bouncing objects. Bean bags aren't great. Foam balls are a little bit better. Baseballs are Okay, tennis balls are bouncy enough to build a game around, and super balls are so bouncy that you can sell them just based on their bounciness. If Captain America's shield is going to absorb and return kinetic energy like any of these, we need the vibranium that makes it up to have a coefficient of restitution somewhere around there. Closer to one. And it could be if the vibranium, steel, and something else mixture was the perfection of elastic properties. Jeez. You can estimate a material's coefficient of restitution by knowing that material's yield strength or when it will exit the elastic range and knowing the material's elasticity or the stress over strain curve that we had earlier. Now, if the yield strength dominates in this estimation or the two properties are roughly the same, then you can see that the COR will be around one and the material might bounce around like Captain America's shield. 
Knowing this relationship, you should be able to see why a Newton's Cradle desk toy works. Very stiff, very elastic spheres hitting each other at low velocities, leading to a high coefficient of restitution. And you should be amazed at how much kinetic energy a amorphous metal can return to a steel ball bearing when it has a cool combination of these properties. When they're right, it works. Vibranium absorbs kinetic energy, meaning that it should be elastic, and the shield is nigh indestructible, meaning that the mixture has a high yield strength. So if the shield was made to balance these properties in the right way, it should have an amazing coefficient of restitution at velocities that no other metals could take impacts at. And so if Tony Stark's dad built the shield the way it looks like it's built with vibranium laced rings running around it, it would allow for some deformation along this axis. And so Captain America could throw the shield, it would impact some surface, deform slightly, and then snap back into a position to regain more energy at this velocity than any other metal could. And it would have more energy going into the next impact. And it would be a lot of energy because it would be thrown by Captain America. That's why the shield bounces. So why does Captain America's shield bounce if it's supposed to absorb kinetic energy? Well, I think we forgot to look at where that energy goes after it gets absorbed. If vibranium, steel, and whatever else alloy was a perfect mixture of real world properties like elasticity and strength, it could regain most of the kinetic energy given to it by Captain America to bounce off a wall, to ricochet bullets, and to be an otherwise very good shield. Because science. I'm gonna give you a really uh, nerdy math joke to say to your friends when you see uh, the next Captain America film when he's in Infinity War. Do you know what the sequel to Infinity War could technically be called? Infinity plus one. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, Chrissy. If you want more science, you can subscribe to Alpha, where you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else at projectalpha.com, and you can also follow me on SciFile at Instagram and Twitter, and if you want other stuff, you can check out Musquatch. Ah! Thanks.